advertisers spend millions of pounds a year deliberately trying to influence the way you think. But according to one British psychologist, ads could be a lot more powerful if they took account of people's subconscious reactions. He's designed a machine to do just that, and he claims it can detect what you really feel about an ad. I volunteered to have my mind read by the system that promises to put the science back into the art of persuasion. Advertising used to be simple, say it loud, clear and often. It was called the hard sell. But over the years, a gentler art of persuasion has emerged. The soft sell of oblique messages and dreamlike visions. It may be creative, but if it doesn't sell your product, you need to know why. Over the years, the persuaders have tried all sorts of different ways to check our responses to their campaigns in the hope of finding out what turns us on and what doesn't. But gauging our responses to their increasingly complex advertising messages is getting harder all the time. Modern market research relies on questions, direct questions, group questions, interactive questions, point and tell, what catches your eye? Even a paddle which records the advert's highs and lows. But accuracy relies on honesty. The problem facing advertisers is whether they can ever be 100% sure if their guinea pigs are telling the truth, that they mean what they say or say what they mean. But now there's a new test called MindScan. It's a system that claims to throw light on the darker areas of our subconscious. It works on the principle of what can't speak, can't lie. MindScan is a simple idea based on measuring brain waves. I'm about to have an EEG scan. I'm going to watch a sequence of film clips I've never seen before. You find not far down in the glade, the alum spring, a grand cascade. As we watch television, we become emotionally involved. Every image we see affects us in some way. And all the while, our brain is sending out a complex interplay of signals, brain waves, clues to our subconscious feelings. Right, right, let's go! <laughs> What's new is the way these signals are deciphered. MindScan is the brainchild of psychologist Dr. David Lewis. He got together with a computer scientist to create a program which would make sense of this web of brain waves. It produces a simple graph of our response to a series of images. Dr. Lewis has called this graph the index for cortical arousal. This shows your different levels of interest for the various scenes you saw. The red dots indicate breaks, different scenes within that particular clip. So here we're looking at the scene we've entitled Waterfalls. Well, you weren't particularly interested in that, but your interest really soared when you came to Faulty Towers. Well, absolutely, it's John Cleese. <laughs> Interestingly, the car was not boring. I mean, the car, you know, it's showing sort of right at the bottom there. And the Koalas is much higher, and in fact, I, I like cars. It's not saying, we're not saying you found it boring. I can't say that. What I can say is you found that, those images less interesting than the Koalas. The Koalas grabbed your attention more. It's these unexpected high spots that could help advertisers to design the perfect ad. Let's say I'm making a television commercial and I want to put my brand name of my product up at the point where the audience are going to be paying maximum attention. Yeah. Well, I would put it up after the koalas, rather than after the car, because after the koalas, they are already attending, or better yet, after that scene in Faulty Towers. Putting the brand name in the wrong place was an expensive mistake for one company. After a highly popular That's campaign, quite, you know? they found that no one could recall their name. Believe this. I mean, here we have one of the most successful campaigns in insurance history, and people are not remembering it because at the end of the commercial, the interest level dropped, and that was the very point at which we made the connection between you better ring the royal and royal insurance. The wonderful thing about MindScan that uh, appealed to me immediately was that when we did the research uh, and they looked at the advert, they came up with exactly the sort of thing that we picked up from this very expensive research um, on the basis of just one, uh, one test. Now, clearly that isn't enough. You're going to have to do it much more. But uh, it really is, a, I think, a very powerful tool. Well, the client's obviously impressed. But what about the people who did their market research? 
From what I've heard about MindScan, it isn't adding anything to what we already do in terms of our pre-testing. You will be able to tell from using MindScan which bits of the ad caused arousal and which didn't. But without asking questions, you will not know whether that was a positive arousal or a negative arousal. You won't be able to do anything with those results because they don't mean anything. All you know is that people were very excited by a bit and were very um, non-stimulated by a different bit. So you would still have to talk to the respondent in terms of what's going on in their head. Um, what are they, you know, was that a positive or a negative response? There's obviously a place for focus groups where people discuss the commercial. There's certainly a place for the interest lever. But I think there's also a place within that research mix for a system like MindScan, which can show you so very clearly what's going on in the viewer's mind while they're watching a commercial. So Dr. Lewis has still got some selling to do. But if MindScan is as good as he claims, designing the perfect sales pitch should be a cinch. You better ring the royal.